Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in a prior video we took a look at this Krua Outdoors Cocoon Tent. I got my first impressions taking a look at this, looking at the overall features and quality of this tent, but I'm getting closer and closer to bringing this on an outdoor adventure. So with that, one of my main difficulties is the overall bulkiness of the pump required to pump up this tent's airframe. And I did a bunch of research to find a product that I thought would be a suitable replacement, a smaller, lighter, and more compact unit that gives me the overall capability to inflate this as I need, yet with less weight and bulk. And here I have an Oasir P1 compressor. This is a small battery powered compressor capable of doing all the work I need to blow up this Krua Cocoon's airframe. And I plan on bringing this with me on an upcoming backpacking trip. So when you look at these side by side, I definitely have an advantage here in the overall volume category. So in this video, I'm doing what I can to get this compressor outfitted and testing it for the first time really to see if it's an overall viable option for this Krua Cocoon. So this video today is really for me the ability to test this system and as a Krua ambassador provide some feedback to the people at Krua for potential ideas and upgrades for future iterations of their products. I think having some flexibility and versatility and different options in pumping capabilities for different products is definitely important with a system like this. So this video is maybe a little bit less for you, the viewers, and maybe a little bit more for Krua and also for the company Oasir who manufactures this compressor. But it is kind of interesting and I'm definitely going through a thought process and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to talk about do me a favor stay tuned now behind me I have the Krua Cocoon insulated tent Take a look back in one of my prior videos if you're interested in seeing my first impressions and feature review. Now when I speak of my first impressions, two things really hit me right away that kind of caught me by surprise. First is the overall bulk and size of the tent. It is quite heavy at around 15 pounds, but I found a solid solution and the ability to take this with me by pulling it in a poke sled. And for something that's fully insulated and quilted, I can kind of give it a little bit of wiggle room in terms of the overall bulk and weight. But the problem is that it relies on an airframe to blow it up. And in that regard, it requires a pump. So this pump here is one from Krua Outdoors. This is what they provide as basically a kit to help blow this up. So not only does it come with the pump, but it comes with the hoses. And this to me is another item that's just quite frankly bulky. Now it does have the ability to pump the airframe up with ease. Granted, it is bulky, but it does the work perfectly fine. This does rely on seven PSI to maintain the airframe's proper rigidity. I did a quick little test with my breath, tried to blow it up in an effort to leave this behind, but after doing some research, I found out that the lungs typically can only provide up to about two PSI. So it's no wonder why after blowing it up with my lungs, I didn't have the proper inflation to really give the tent the overall rigidity that it needed. But with that, I also felt as though it came close to being at least a suitable option. It stayed upright. I was able to utilize it with all the features and functions that I needed to, but it wasn't as firm or secure as it needed to be. So what I thought would be a great option is to bring a small battery powered pump. But there's a downfall with that too. The problem with a pump is the fact that typically battery powered pumps cannot provide the full 7 PSI needed. They're generally capable of blowing things up far less than a single PSI. So where I need 7, the pump was going to fall very short. And that's where this comes in. This is an Oasir Mini Compressor. So this Oasir Mini Compressor is a battery operated compressor capable of providing 150 pounds of pressure. And that for me is a definite solution that may work. This is just a little bit heavy in the hand. However, I would venture to guess it's pretty close in overall weight and it is certainly a fraction of the size. So I've been working to get this outfitted the way I need to in order to properly inflate this Krua Cocoon. So now getting into the inflation of the Krua Cocoon. Here you'll see one of the fill valves. 
And here is the hose that comes with the standard Krua pump. So looking at the end of the nozzle here, you'll notice that it does fit nicely inside of this fill valve. This fill valve here is a one-way valve, so as you blow air into it, it cannot escape back out. So what I'm going to attempt to do is take this Oasir pump and fit it with all the necessary fittings that I need in order to fit it onto this valve. The key being right now, I don't have exactly what I need. I'm still kind of in the experimentation mode. I don't want to go on a big crazy trip and find all the things that I need to fit this up if it's not going to work. So right now I'm kind of just theorizing to see if it'll work in the first place. And since this is a compressor and not a pump, it delivers far less cubic feet per minute than a pump would. So it is going to be a long process to fill this up. And if you look at the entire size of this, you'll notice that there is quite a large volume. Each one of these orange stripes represents one of the airframes that needs to be filled up. So as I mentioned before, I was able to get my lung capacity to fill this up pretty easy. It did not take too much in the way of overall effort, and that'll get at least two PSI and a good volume into each one of these airframes. So I'm going to blow up as much as I can with my breath, try to get this inflated, stand this up, and that will be a good start. And then I can try and use the compressor. So at this point, without a ton of effort, I've been able to fill these airframes with what I believe to be about 2 PSI, strictly on my lung pressure. I'm going to do a little bit of work to adapt the compressor to make it fit inside these fill nozzles, and then we'll see how long it takes to get each one of these airframes up to 7 PSI. So the first piece we're going to use here, this is actually a piece of the kit that comes with the compressor and this threads easily into the end of the compressor. So this is just a standard piece that comes right with it. So that to me is kind of my starting point. Now, this obviously is not going to work. This is a simple fill valve for a Schrader valve and that just will not work. But I have a couple of things that we're kicking around that I'm hoping will adapt and allow me to do this at this point. So here you'll see an air nozzle that I have for my compressor setup, and it's the best I have at this moment. So the first thing is, I noticed that luckily this is able to fit right in here, basically the size of a Schrader valve, and then this can kind of clamp down and hold it in place. Now in my testing, I've done some very preliminary testing to see if this would work. If I put my thumb over the nozzle, it will blow off right there. So obvious that a buildup of pressure, this will not hold. Now, does does this hold 7 PSI? I'm not really too sure, but we're definitely going to find out. Now that may be an indication that this cannot hold 7 PSI because I do have the ability to actually set the pressure inside the compressor so that it hits a maximum value and this is already blowing off. So that might be a weakness, but we're going to go with it for now and continue to test this theory. So then the next thing you'll see is that I took a zip tie and I held down this lever. And then the only nozzle that I have is this air nozzle here, which you'll notice has a very very small hole so it's not going to deliver too much in the way of CFM. So what I'm going to do is cut the tip of this off to open it up and get a larger orifice size so I can pass more CFM. And then I'm going to wrap this in some electrical tape just to get it to a thicker diameter, hopefully to the same overall outer diameter as the original factory provided fill nozzle. So a quick minor change of plan, which is because I know the factory adapter fits perfectly into the Krua Cocoon fill valve, at that point what I thought is why don't I just get this to adapt to it. So I'm basically fatter than I need to be, so I'm going to continue to pull back on this electrical tape just a little bit at a time until I get this to be about the perfect fit, and then what that's going to allow me to do is reinforce this by getting a good amount of tape around this entire thing to really beef it up, and then I know I'm getting a good quality quality factory fit and I think this should work. 
So whether you're into Frankenstein or MacGyver, either way, this thing is put together. So it's a little crude, a little dirty, looks kind of funny, but at the end of the day, I think this is going to work pretty well. I have completely connected this up. I reinforced it here with a zip tie. Main reason being, if this is going to blow apart, I feel like electrical tape, because it can stretch, may have the ability to pull apart, but with the zip tie, I would say not likely. So as long as I'm careful and I don't accidentally knock the zip tie off, I think that's pretty solid solid. And then in this department over here, I'm hoping I won't have any problems. This fit up a little bit better uh, than this did. So I'm thinking this is probably going to work, but we will find out. So at this point, I'm going to fit this up onto the compressor and we'll take a quick look at that compressor for the overall features and functions, and then we'll blow this thing up. So taking another look at the compressor, again, this is the Oasir Mini Compressor. I believe this is considered to be the model P1. Now, you'll see on the end here that there are some buttons. So basically a power button, a unit of measure button, and then plus and minus. So the key here being that this can regulate the pressure and turn off automatically when it reaches a desired pressure. Here's where the power goes in. Now, this does come standard with both a car charger and also a wall charger, so that works out pretty well. And then on this side, this is where the hose attaches. So at this point, we're going to get this fit up. Now it's probably easier for me to spin the compressor than it is the actual nozzle because of how kind of crazy it is, but that's fit up nice and tight there. And then getting into this side. So the first thing is you hit the unit button and the plus and the minus, and depending on what you want for pressure, you can dial that in. So you'll see here, unit 7.0. So now on PSI, setting it to seven, this is ready to go. And you press the power button and that turns on. So this is completely ready to go. So I'm gonna mount this up, get it fit up to the fill valve, and then let's see how we do. Now it looks to me like this is gonna work out pretty well. It's just about the right overall shape and geometry. I'm gonna probably need to be a little bit careful with this and keep an eye on it. Now I'm curious if this really should go to seven right now, where the seven is the maximum, and I'm not really sure how this is calibrated. I'm thinking of setting the compressor to five and seeing how we do. So I'm gonna to go to five, dial it back, and then we'll check this for an overall runtime. So now I'm gonna start the pump. I have it set for five. 5 PSI and getting on my phone real quick here we will start the stopwatch now I can see already that this is definitely already starting to take shape without too much effort oh wow it's actually already getting quite firm so taking a look here it is not measuring the PSI at this point so I need to be careful. I don't want to over inflate this. I mean, that is already quite firm and I'm just going to turn that off because that to me is already like very firm. So uh, I think I could definitely go a little bit more, but I have to say in like 30 seconds, I'm already just a touch nervous. So I'm not sure if there's a way to get this to actually measure the PSI that's in there. Um, but it should turn off at five. So I don't know. I'm just going to go to three PSI and let it run a little longer. Again, at this point, I am like literally only a... Oh, and it just turned off. All right, so that seems to be three. Let's go to five. And units, PSI, five. I turned off altogether. So this may be at five PSI. I am not too sure what's going on here. Let's try seven. Nope. But this feels like extremely firm. So I'm gonna pull this off and then pump the other side. In fact, even better is I'm gonna deflate the other side altogether. Let that go down completely. And now let's see how long it takes to actually fill this up. So I'm gonna get myself situated now that there's basically no pressure in this and blow it up from scratch. Let's give that a shot. So I'm just gonna reset my stopwatch, get that ready. I'm gonna position the pump now, get that going, and then we'll start this test. So starting the stopwatch, I have this set to five PSI. So units, real quick, PSI, five, and go. So I'm just gonna kind of monitor this as it goes, see how this does, and see how long it takes. So, so far, 30 seconds. Let's let this run for a bit. Whoa. So you can see here, this is already starting to take shape. I'm a minute and 20 in. Now, I basically just have to 
stand this upright at this point. I mean, it is getting nice and firm, so I need to be careful here. But this pump is making very fast work out of this. I mean, this is already very close. I can tell you it is far beyond the two PSI that my lungs is capable of producing. Probably closer to four, maybe five. So I'm gonna get that pump set, situated and finish filling this up. But in literally no time, and even with all that messing around, I started late on the stopwatch, and here I'm still only at two minutes. So I would say so far, I mean, this is definitely a viable option. This is excellent. So fit it up again, five PSI, and go. So let's finish filling this thing up here. So at this point, I can tell you that the pump was doing its job and turned off on its own. And after all that messing around, I'm only four and a half minutes in. So that tells me that according to the electric pump, there should be five PSI in here. Now I'm gonna bring the other side to five PSI as well. And then we're gonna try one last thing. The final part of this test. I am very satisfied with how full these airframes are. I do not see any need to go further. However, I do have the standard factory crew pump here and I also have the valve. So this is a seven PSI blow off valve. So what I'm gonna do is take this seven PSI valve I happen to have one final fill nozzle from another pump that I was able to adapt to the factory hose, which will fit the fill valve on the cocoon. I'm gonna pump these up now using the hand pump to seven PSI. That way I know exactly where it stands. Now that is, of course, assuming that the fill valve is actually calibrated as well. I mean, who really knows with some of this stuff? But anyway, um, if I get this on the inflate side, fit it all up. Now at this point, I can connect this to the cocoon and I can fill it with exactly seven psi hopefully so so getting this all fit up it's hard to say if there's actually any air going in here at this point So it sounds to me like the 7 PSI blow off is actually going off. I don't think there's any more air going in there. So I'd say that these airframes with the electric pump have anywhere between 5 and 7 PSI. So feeling both of them at this point, they feel almost identical. It may just be a touch more air in this side now that I've used the hand pump. So the best part of this entire experiment is that at this point, I go from carrying this to carrying this. Now again, is there a little more weight on one side or another? Well, we're gonna take a look at that too. But this tells me that this is definitely a viable option. So now here, getting the standard Krua pump on the scale, you'll see this rings in at one pound, 5.0 ounces. And the Oacer P1 mini electric compressor, 14.9 ounces. So all in all, that is a major, major win. So on top of the pump, you have to keep in mind that I am also required to carry the hose. So all in all, a very bulky system. So the fact that this pump is actually heavier and then also including the hose, then this mini compressor, that is a win all the way around. So not only a lighter package, but also more compact. So I'm out here getting my campsite set up. We've hiked in a couple of miles and we're on this beautiful pond here. There's some nice sights over there. I'll grab a video of that in a second. But what I'm doing is setting up my tent. So here's the Krua Duo with the Krua Cocoon insulated tent here. So this has the airframes. Um, at this point, I've introduced some air with my breath. Um, I'm trying to get this positioned into place and it's a little bit awkward. So what I'm gonna do now is start using this Oacer compressor to start to get a little more air in here and I'll help this thing hopefully stand upright. So this here is the moment of truth. I have the Oacer Mini P1 pump here, all MacGyvered and ready to go with this uh, 
cocoon here installed inside this duo. So um, once I get the compressor going, I'm going to have to mine this and make sure I get it upright and kind of take my time and bounce between both valves and get it to stand nice and upright before I completely fill it. I want to get it into place while it's still easy to kind of maneuver around. So anyway, um, this is kind of the moment I've been waiting for to test this thing out. So let's see how it goes. Sweet. See how that goes. It goes fast actually, so I kind of got to be careful. Yeah, I got to straighten this thing out. And it goes pretty fast. Um, with my regular breath, um, you know, I'm thinking I got less air in it than I did when I was in the house just because I couldn't get this all straightened out, but the compressor's getting all the little kinks out of it and getting nice and hard, so even if I stopped here, it'd be about perfect. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could go more, but I feel like that's plenty firm. So it did its job. It actually did a great job. Nice and easy. Um, very compact and portable and... I just have to make myself a better adapter here versus this MacGyver thing. But other than that, that was a perfect, perfect match. How is it down there? Nice. <laughs> Cozy. Absolutely. So... Ah, oh, this is just marvelous. So here I have the cocoon perfectly placed inside the duo, and I have to say it was quite easy. Now, you know, like I say, um, I like to practice in controlled environments so that when I'm doing it for real, I'm all set. So because I was very familiar with the shape and the size and the overall layout of kind of all this equipment, it allowed me to set up my camp get my area dug out. Generally speaking, this setup went extremely well. Super easy, no problem at all. All right, so there you have it. This Oasis pump, definitely a success. I am quite happy at this overall performance. I love the idea that I have a small battery powered compressor capable of blowing this up with ease. It was very fast, it was reasonably compact, light enough and didn't really create any problems for me whatsoever. The only thing that this really needs at this point is an appropriate adapter to really adapt not just to this Krua cocoon but maybe to some other things as well. I think this comes with the general overall capability for what its intended purpose is from the manufacturer but this is a very versatile product and in this regard worked very well for the Krua cocoon. So again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Oasir who have provided this compressor for review and also the people at Krua Outdoors who have provided this cocoon. A couple of great products coming together really for one overall intended purpose and I think this experiment was definitely a success. So all right guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.